Hi right, guys, <coughs> I'm going to measure the, uh, the effect of the timing of the pulse on the current through the two coils. We've got the scope probes connected here, both grounds go between the two resistors to measure the current into C2, and the other resistor measures the current out of C2 and into the motor coil. So it's from the charging coil into C2 with the blue probe and from C2 into the motor coil with the yellow probe. Okay, that's how the probes are arranged. I'll just set this probe down. Anyway, it's running away there using just over 200 milliamps, about 220 milliamps from the 12 volt battery source and so what I'll do here I'll, this is my timing lever with this lever I can adjust the timing and you can see the shape of the current current waveforms change so I'll just zoom in on the waveforms themselves a little bit so you can see the subtleties so if I retard the timing to make the uh, coil fire after the magnet has gone past the current, the peak current in the coil In trouble getting stable readings. Peak current in the coil can go up about 150 milli, millivolts or 1.5 amps. If I advance the timing and get it down to 1.24 millivolts, which is 1.2 amps peak current, and the, and the rotor speeds up. That there is timed about dead center over of the magnet over the core. Now if I continue to advance the timing past that point, you can see that the peak currents will rise again. I can go right up to 200 millivolts. As you can see because the timing is so far advanced, motor slows down. I retard the timing so that it's about pretty much dead center to get a nice clean current waveform. That's way retarded. About as far retarded as I can go. That's about top dead center over the coils. Magnet fine directly over the coils. You can see the current waveforms just come together neatly on the tips. And the rotor speeds up real nice. And if I go too far advanced, the current waveforms overlap. As far as timing goes, that's pretty good timing for efficient running.